Hi, welcome to the Culinary Classroom. I'm Michelle Bisbee, Child Nutrition Consultant and Culinary Specialist with the Maine Department of Education Child Nutrition Teams. Today in the kitchen, we're going to be completing some recipes with buckwheat flour and oats and oat flour. The first recipe we're going to look at today is a buckwheat oat muffin. So muffins are really simple and they're a great addition to any school's breakfast. Um, they're easily credited and a wonderful thing about muffins is you can mix in any fruits or nuts or anything you happen to have on hand in your kitchens. I'm making a small batch so I'm going to do it by hand. If you are going to make a large batch, what I would suggest is putting all of your wet ingredients in the bottom of the bowl and then you're dry on top and mixing. So because I'm doing it by hand, we're going to do it a little bit differently. The first thing I'm going to do is take my buckwheat flour, my oats, my oat flour, my spices, baking soda, baking powder, and salt, and put them in a bowl right here and whisk them together. This way they are evenly distributed. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. And now I'm going to take my wet ingredients. For this recipe, that includes oil, milk, we have two eggs. When cracking eggs, I suggest cracking them on the table. Um, if you crack them on the side of the bowl, you run a higher risk of having shells in your eggs. And we need two tablespoons of honey. If you don't have honey in your kitchens, that is all right. If you have either molasses or even pancake syrup can work for this recipe. Basically just a liquid sugar. and then granulated sugar. All right, so we want to get this nice and mixed right up so everything is evenly incorporated. And then we're going to take our wet ingredients and mix them right into our dry ingredients. Now, because muffins are considered a quick bread, you do not want to overmix this. Um, if you overmix them, you'll tend to get a chewier muffin. So we want to mix these ingredients until they are just combined. All right, and I don't have any more dry spots in here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mix in my fruits. Um, today for these muffins, we are going to be using dried cranberries and frozen Maine blueberries. When making muffins, if you have a recipe that you're using that calls for either dried or frozen or fresh fruit, um, you can substitute those items, just be mindful. If you're using a recipe that calls for a dried fruit, you'd really want to substitute it for a dried fruit because it will change the amount of moisture that's in that muffin mix. And again, um, frozen for frozen, um, things like that. If you're using canned, that's fine as well. Um, just make sure to really drain the juice off of that very well. All right, so now that our mix is nicely combined, we're going to take our pan spray and spray down our muffin tin. And I'm going to be using a blue number 16 scoop for these muffins. That is a standard muffin size. Um, and in the child nutrition programs, that'll give you a two ounce muffin, which is a one ounce equivalent grain. Okay. 
You want to be sure when you're scooping your muffins to bring the scoop right up the side of the bowl so you get a nice level scoop every time. This ensures consistency in the muffins that you're serving. Set this down. Scrape my bowl really well. Want to get every little bit of that batter out of there. Don't want to let anything go to waste. If you want at this stage, you're more than welcome to sprinkle a little bit of oats on top as well for decoration. I'm going to leave these just as is, and I'm going to put them into a 350 degree oven. Um, and muffins are easy to tell when they're done if you press on the top gently and it springs back. These estimate 20 to 22 minutes. In a convection oven, you want to make sure that you rotate them halfway through so that you don't have leaning muffins. The fan in the back can sometimes cause that to happen. So at about 20 minutes, I'll check them and we'll see if they're ready to go. So our timer has gone off on our muffins, so we're going to go ahead and check them now. All right, these are looking wonderful, but as you can see, just a little touch on the top of the muffin. It doesn't sink in. It springs back slightly. Um, another thing I'm going to talk about real quick is a tip on removing muffins from the pans. I'm not going to do it right now because they are super hot and I don't want to damage them. But the easiest time to remove them is while they're still warm. If you wait till they're colder, they have a tendency to stick a little bit more. So if you're not using papers on your muffins, I highly suggest dumping them out when they're still warm. And it is a simple as just flipping the pan over and they will all fall out. Once your pan is cooled enough so that you can handle it with your hands without an oven mitt, you can dump your muffins out. And it is just as simple as going like that. You can do it onto a sheet pan if you don't want them to roll away. I chose a piece of parchment paper. And then, of course, you want to display them nicely. Um, a couple of things about using buckwheat flour here. In this particular instance, because we used buckwheat and oats and oat flour, these muffins are actually gluten-free. So that is a really wonderful option if you have any children in your program that cannot have gluten. Um, another great thing about buckwheat is it can be sourced locally in Maine, so that is awesome as well. Just be sure to note that the texture of a buckwheat muffin is going to be a little bit different. Um, it tends to have more of a crumbly texture to it, um, and it does have a little bit of a different look. If I break it open, it kind of has a yellowish color to it, but these are absolutely delicious, and I encourage you to make these in your program and encourage your students to try them. Thank you.